Hey guys, Punk's my name here. Um, I came up with a new technique which is still in infancy, um, but I thought I'd share it with you because um, who knows, someone else may develop it further into into helping me. So um, what I wanted to do is be able to control the hard edges uh, of a mesh um, without worrying too much about the soft tissue um, that's going to get distorted by having too few triangles. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll add triangles later and um, control the soft tissue distortion with pin bones so that you don't have to worry about like individual point movement with those. Um, so let me just show you what I've done so far. I put these lines in and then using my reference trick I just referenced that layer and then I triangulated the reference and then I assigned that reference as being the control for the image. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and create a blink here. Um, I'm just using point movement and mainly um, I've got the it's, it's quite hard to talk and think at the same time. But um, I've got selected points only um, on for the, for the magnet tool. So I'm just making these sort of adjust to each other. Now you see that there's some, the eye, eyeball stuff is in front. We'll fix that in a sec. Um, now I probably could have fixed that by drawing the inner shape before the, uh, I haven't actually tested this, so um, it's, again, this is a, another working theory, but I think that if you create, because I created these pupil shapes last, that's why they keep popping to the front um, when I actually triangulate. So I think if you wait and do that um, at the end, I mean, sorry, if you do that first, um, before you triangulate everything else, no, before you draw the, the other contours, um, then when you do triangulate, the shapes should, in theory, although well, I'll, I'll test this and report back on it later, should stay in front. But if I go to back to frame one, I'll just hide this for a sec. You see these circles are where the eyeballs are. So I'm just going to um, select, not that, select um, all of these. I'm holding down shift to select these. And then I'll press shift and down that brings them all to the back so now um, we shouldn't see those pupils in front of the eye okay so what I've got so far is that okay and we're three minutes in so I need to try and hurry up um, I'll do the same with the um, with the eyebrow so what I'm doing is I'm selecting some points and then hitting tab to select all all attached points which is Part of the big thing about this um, having this reference layer is that, as I said in the other video, if I tried to do that, if I had only a triangulated layer, um, then hitting tab would select every point on the entire um, document, which is not very useful compared to this. So at the moment, I'm just like doing this blink, and maybe I'll what I'll do is I'll close his mouth here as well. So I'm just using scaling to straighten out the lines just to flatten out their differences. And then what I'll do is I'll finish off um, using the magnet tool just to put them exactly where I want them, which is around here. Now you see again, I've got some weird um, distortion thing happening, but I showed you how to fix that with the eye. So I'm just going to leave that for now and not waste your time. Um, so again, here I'm going to just scale that. So this is happening because of the, the teeth underneath. I'm going to, I'll correct that in a sec. So the teeth have their own, um, because I, as, as it transitions here, I didn't want the teeth to move too much. So if I take the teeth here and then I move them up, then that should hopefully fix some of that distortion. Um, 
I mean, this isn't going to be perfect because I'm trying to keep it quick for you guys, but... Um, okay, so we've got a basic facial, some facial movement there. Now, the trick is to use um, to use pin bones on what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a bunch of um, of triangles more randomly um, because one of the big things about if if I put lines all along the contours of the the face then they're very rigidly going to follow the face and when you distort you're going to see triangles and it it looks quite um, quite rigid but if if you put like pretty much random triangles in the places where you want soft tissue to be um, then you get more um, more random distortion rather than really st like strong edge triangles um, all right that will do so I'm going to move that here now first things I'm going to do here before I forget is I'm going to select all of these rigid points and I'm going to make a layer, uh, a groups selection out of them. Um, this is important because later I'm going to do something, um, well, you'll see in a minute. So I'm going to call these contour and create. So what I've done is I've created that selection. So if I select that, it will grab it. And it also means that if I select it and select inverse, um, I can select all the points that aren't part of that original contour selection. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the freehand tool oops, uh, to... Oh, hold on, I've got something funny going on here. Oh, we okay, so freehand tool just to put down some shapes here. Let's put that here. So where I want random kind of triangles, I don't want it to connect to any other line, but I'll put down some triangles here. Oops, I don't want that connected. Well, in fact, I probably won't need it there, but let's put some around here. Um, so at this point, I've got... Um, I've got point reduction down to 20 and I've got the, because I want a fair amount of points, not too many, but because um, they're all going to get triangulated. I also want the, well, I put the smoothing up a little bit just so it's not so, um, uh, like, so it just smooths out what I'm, what I'm doing here a bit. So now let's, let's see what we got. Well, if I um, select the contour and then I can, Control I to select the inverse. Um, these are all the lines that I just put down with the freehand tool. Um, control P turns them into peaks, which is what they're going to look like. So, I mean, if you if you wanted to, I mean, it's good to have a random number of triangles all over the place. So, I mean, you could maybe tidy this up a little bit if you needed to. But um, what I'm also, I'll I'll add another one here. Okay. So now, if I um, select the contour group and what I need to do is create a bone layer and put everything under the bone layer. Hopefully you can see those, yeah, okay. Um, so let's do this first is if I put down some points, some pin bones where so soft tissue is, okay? So th eventually these pin bones are only going to control the lines that aren't um, random. No, nope. the lines that are random, they're, gonna, they're not gonna control the lines that I put down initially. Um, but let's just see what happens when I use these without doing that first, is as I move, oh, these are already, they're already not. Hold on. I copied this layer from another file. So I think 
let's see what happens if I do oh <laughs> I haven't retriangulated it okay so now I've got all those I go to here I right click on it I update the reference and then replace mismatch <laughs> still can't say it couldn't say it in the last video I can't say it now mismatched vectors um, I triangulate the mesh again and now you should see a much much more dense especially around the soft tissue areas um, random mesh so you can't really make out uh, very defined sort of shapes that are to do with the contours but more kind of random in those other areas um, now let's see what happens if I move these, so um, okay, I move these. Let's. Uh, I think I need to. I'm losing my direction here a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is just to make sure that they're all being affected. Is I'm going to flexi bind all the points. And I'll need to re-triangulate just to show you the difference. I'll replace mismatched mismatched vectors, re-triangulate, and then right now you see hopefully. Yeah. So you see that the all of the contours are being affected by these at the moment. So I can make them bigger or smaller, but it's actually moving the the things that I very precisely put earlier and I don't want that to happen because I, what I want to do is I want to use these to just correct the the soft tissue so what I need to do is if I go to the original layer um, let's delete this go to the original layer and select the contour points now these ones I want to release from binding um, so they're not going to be automatically affected by the bone movements. Um, to make that happen on the triangulated layer, I need to update it again. And so I'll re-triangulate that. Okay. Oh, I did that off layer zero. I don't know if that's going to... Frame zero, rather. I don't know if that's going to... Oh, no. Messed it up. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. I'll re-triangulate this. Uh. Okay, we're back to where we started now. But you see that the um, the points I I put down after don't move, but the rest do. And now, if I move this. The ones that I did put down before don't move. So you can just use this to, to correct the bits in between the hard edge bits. You see the eyeball thing has come back, but don't worry about that. I won't bother fixing that now. Um, so all of this stuff, oh, it's not doing anything. Okay, so comparing that to before, which I can't really do at this point. Um, see here, I've got more distortion on the corner of the thing, but now that I've got those points um, not bound, I can always add more of these where I need them, and they're not going to affect. This is what happened earlier, that's why I had to redo it. Um, the points that I'd already told not to flexi bind. Um, because I was testing this before making the video. That's why I had to reset it back to flexi binding to show you what would happen by default. Um, so I'm adding a few more points here where I want to affect the distortion, but now I c I've got more control points to actually change the, change the flow of the bits between the hard edges that I've put. So I've actually got a lot more control over the overall distortion as well as having the control over the corner edges. <sighs> we got there in the end. Right, so hopefully uh, you found this useful. Um, 
it's, it may be not that clear. It's a bit kind of advanced, I guess. Um, this is the one that I, I did as the test earlier. Um, so let's see what we got here. I hide the points. Um, so, I mean, there's still a bit of distortion here because I didn't go into perfecting it before I uh, before I started recording the video for you guys. But we're at 15 minutes, so I'm going to sign off. Um, hopefully, this all makes sense. Um, try it yourself and show me what you do. Um, and if you come up with even better ideas, please share. All right, I'll uh, see you soon.